everybody. Happy spring break. It is Julie Salva. I am here. Let me scoot my chair over a little bit. I am here for session three of Spring Break Stampin' at Stampin' Shine with Julie Salva. You know, have I ever told you guys, I think I have, why I named my group Stampin' Shine? The stamp part is, I mean, that that's simple, right? I mean, because we stamp. But the shine part, that's the part that I love. Like, I love the stampin' part, okay? I do. But I'm moving that down just a little bit. I feel like, like, just like my head, like I'm the Wizard of Oz. It's just like my head is here. But the shine part, that's the thing that I really love. Because I feel like when we, like, send a card out or when we bring ourselves out into our community, whoever that is, maybe it's just your family, maybe that's your community, maybe it's a larger community, whatever it is, but whenever we bring like some happiness and some joy and some kindness to people, that's shine. So I love the stamping part, and then I love that this is a community. Y'all, we're at almost 300 people. Hey, Peggy. Um, I would love to get to 300 people, I'm not going to lie. But but so when we bring our shine part out into the community, into our, into our people, I think that changes things, right? So anyway, that's why my group is named Stamp and Shine. I don't know that you even ever wondered that, but um, I don't know, I thought I would just tell you. So anyway, super excited to be here, you guys. I may be going out today, these may be the best projects of the whole three series. They really may be. Um, let me show you what we've made before, just in case this is your first time tuning in. So on Wednesday, session one of our spring break, I made a seagull card, right? And it's designed to sit up. See, Susan Canfield is, is the one that I learned how to do this from. It's designed to, all right, now see, that's fun. It's designed to look like a seagull. I may just do this for a while. All right, I'll stop. Anyway, seagull card. So that's the first card that we made. We also made on Wednesday, so if you want to see these in the video, you can go back to Wednesday session one. We also made just a fun vellum fold using that, that specialty vellum, which is so great. Okay. We also made yesterday, we made an easy stair step, like a faux stair step card. An easy faux stair step using Artist Gallery. And we talked about how to apply color to stamps. So we did this one with the um, Wave from Waves of Inspiration. And this Wave, rather than just having one color, has some Pool Party and Coastal Cabana on it. So we did that as well. And that was just our quick and easy card. So today I have two more. Now, Here's how it works, just as a review for those of you who are just stopping in or maybe you forgot. If you place a, a well, let, let me step back. I don't want to hit you with the ordering first. I want you to have fun. I want you to take like a half an hour and just sit back and enjoy. That's number one. Number two, if you want to place an order, it's up to you. If you don't, that's fine too. But if you want to place an order of $35, you will get the pre-cut paper to make all six of these projects mailed to you so you can do it at home. If you place a $50 order, you'll get that kit mailed to you, plus you'll get some gems just for fun. So anyway, I'm ready to stamp. Are you guys ready to see what we've got? Y'all, I'm telling you, I'm going out strong. I'm going out strong today. Okay, let's do it. I will try to look at my computer and see if I can see your comments. If I can, amazing, and I'll answer them. If not, I'll get it at the end. And if somebody's there and, and they ask, you ask a question and somebody else wants to answer it, that's fine. You guys talk amongst yourselves. I used to teach high school English. I'm accustomed to that. Okay, let's go. I'm moving the camera down. Don't get nauseated. Here we go. And down and up and down. A little bit more. I think that's going to work. Let me look over here on my computer. Make sure you guys can see my hands and that I'm at a good place for you here. One day, you guys, I'm going to be... Oh, oh, you can. My hands are, are very good. I am going to be the technical person that you want. One day, I will be that. It, it is not this day, but one day I will be. Hello, Pam and Brenda. And Kathy, too. And Jennifer and Terry. Oh, yay, you guys. I'm so excited. Okay. Let me go first here. Here we go. So, paper scrap people, raise your hand. I mean, I can't see you, but we'll pretend. Oh, oh my gosh, that was bad. Raise your hand if you're a paper scrap person. If like, I keep all the scraps. That's what I do. I keep the scraps. I can't throw them away. 
Um, I'm, I'm a paper scrap person. Sorry about that, you guys. Thank you for bearing with me while I'm, yeah, now we're back at it. This is the card for you. No lie. I was over um, cleaning out my, my craft room at, at our other house. This was before we moved. And my friend, Julie Rouse, and she will not be ashamed of, of me telling you this. She is such a paper scrap person that I had a trash bag of scraps and she took that whole trash bag home with her. She's like, you cannot throw these out. So, I mean, I didn't, but she took them. So there you go. Okay, here's card number one. Have you guys heard of a sunburst card? That's what we're going to make. And it, you are going to love it if you are a paper scrap person. Take a look. Take a look at this. All right, I, I'm sorry it's backwards. I did not intend for it to be backwards. You guys, look at that. So this is going to be great. It is super, super easy, super easy to do, and it uses up all your paper scraps. So let's talk about it. I am using the paper scraps from the online exclusive, the Hello Irresistible paper. Um, if you're in Card Club this month, you will be getting in the mail. They're going out today, today and tomorrow. You'll be getting a full pack of this, so you'll have a lot of scraps. But I'm using the scraps from that, and then I'm using the coordinating stamp set, Irresistible Blooms. Now, Irresistible Blooms does have um, dies that match it. The dies are unfortunately on back order, but um, they'll be back. April 17th, I think, is the date. So let me explain to you how to make this. So I'm going to take these papers and set them over here, and I'm going to pull out all my scraps. So this is what you need to know. You want to cut your scraps to three quarters of an inch, okay? A width of three quarters of an inch. Now, this is three quarters by six. You'll have some that are three quarters by three, some that are three quarters by four. It really doesn't matter, but you need them to be, well, I mean, I guess you could have them however wide you want, but I cut these for, for this, okay? If you like this spacing, I cut them to three quarters of an inch. Next thing you're going to want to do is take a piece of cardstock. Now, I chose white. Honestly, it doesn't matter because it's not going to show. But I took this piece of cardstock and I cut it to three and three quarters times five. And this is going to be my mat. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply adhesive. And if I can get my silicone, yep, here it is. My silicone map. You remember this from, from session one? I told you it wasn't a sexy purchase, but it's an important one. You're getting ready to see why. Um, I'm going to apply adhesive all over this. And this is why I say it really doesn't matter what color you go with because um, like, it's not going to be shown. Now, why is it important to have this mat here? Because when I apply adhesive all over this, and I could use my, my glue if I wanted to, my liquid glue if I wanted to, but it's important to get up into these edges here, okay? If I'm doing this on my paper mat, I'm getting glue all over my paper, okay? And by paper mat, I'm talking about this. And so when I go and I lay a card over it, now that card sticks to it, okay? All right, this is not a problem. What this is, is the end of the roll. So if you're wondering, what do you do when your tape runs out? I'm getting ready to show you. I had a feeling this was going to happen. So because I am hugely prepared at all times, and by hugely prepared at all times, I mean rarely am I prepared. But this one time I am, I'm going to grab a stamp and Seal refill, pop it out. You guys are going to see how easy this is to do if you haven't. Wait, come on now, if you haven't done it already. All you do is pop that. Right in there, take your cover. Make sure you don't throw the two covers away, or the cover away. You need that right there. And there you go. And now I'm back at it. What'd that take? About 18 seconds? Not a problem at all. All right, so again, this is, it's glue all over. Ugh. Okay, there we go. Does it look pretty? It doesn't matter, all right? Now, here's what you're gonna do. And honestly, you probably should have done this first. You're gonna take this three quarter by whatever, piece of piece of DSP of a scrap and you're going to line it up on your cutting tool and you're going to do opposite corners okay now in the track so when I say track I'm talking about this right here opposite corners in the track so I've got this corner to this corner it doesn't have to be exact but you want it to be kind of close and then you're just going to cut see what happens now now I have these two pieces here you can see when I flip them and line them up, you can kind of see what, what's going to happen. Fortunately for you guys, I have done like a bunch of these. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trim down one more 
just so you can see. I, I've already done a bunch ahead of time. I thought, you know, <laughs> the people probably don't want to see me doing this. And by the people, I mean you. You guys are the people. All right, so I've got a bunch of these, and I'm ready to put them here. Again, y'all, so easy. Now, here's a tip. This is what you need to know, all right? You can pick wherever you want your points to meet. For me, I just did them all over to the edge here. What you need to know is as you're putting your paper down, two things need to happen. It needs to come across your adhesive mat, good grief, it needs to come across your adhesive mat to where it, it, it goes outside the lines, okay? So it, it's this paper ends past both of the borders. And then at this point, you just pick it up and you start laying it down. You're just gonna lay it flush, okay? Just gonna lay it flush. This one is not, that one did not quite go flush. So I'm gonna not be scared. Do not be scared of paper. It's just paper and adhesive. I'm gonna lay that one there, perfect. And I will take this one. And, and, and here's the thing, guys. You don't need to put a whole lot of thought into like, um, do the colors match and everything. We've talked about this before. Stampin' Up! people, trained Stampin' Up! professionals, make these, I'm gonna hold that one a little bit, make these colors match. So I'm certain that at the end of the day, it's gonna look good. And, and I mean, I wanted to, I didn't, I didn't have time, but I wanted to do like some other ones and some different paper. So I would love if you guys do this. I mean, and all you need is just paper scraps, right? I would love if some of y'all were like, you know what, Julie, I'll make some with some different paper patterns and then I'll post it on your page. That would be awesome. Because if you did that, I would actually be able to maybe send you a prize, which would be good. Okay, let's look at some comments. Hi, Jen Drake. Kathy is there. Jen, you throw out all your scraps. Jennifer Vanderwecken, is that how they teach you to do things up in Canada there? No, don't throw out all your scraps. I will say I throw out most of my scraps, but, but for a project like this now, I'm like, ooh. If there's a paper I really love, I think I'm gonna keep that. So so really the hardest thing about this is just, it, it can be a little bit tedious doing it, but um, it's not bad. So it looks like a hot mess. Oh, I need a, I think I need a green right here as we're going along. Now again, remember, I'm making sure that my paper goes off both edges of my, my adhesive mat. You see why this is so important to have this silicone thing? If you don't have it now, you better go buy it right this second. Okay, and I'm gonna put that one right there. I think that'll end it for me. All right, okay, we're done. <laughs> Not really, almost though. We, re we truly are almost done. So now flip it over here and here's what you're gonna do. Take your scissors, all right? Take your paper snips. And for me, I just go down one side by hand. The rest of it, I'm gonna do using my trimmer. But I need to go one, down one side because I gotta have a flat edge here. Okay, so I'm going, cutting ever so carefully. Perfect. See how it's starting to come together now? Now, I suppose when you're, when you're done cutting it, you're gonna have a lot more scraps, but that's another project for another day. Today is this project, okay? See, now I can just go through. Okay, now let me just show you something here. And, and I know somebody's gonna be creative on this because I, I actually, all right, you see when I cut that off, see how it kind of hangs there? Doesn't that look like a pennant to you? Like the kind of pennant for a party? I, I really, oh my gosh, you could save that and put it right there and make it like a pennant for a party. How, okay, I can't even talk right now. I've just, I've just developed something on my own. I will not have to copy people any longer. Oh, there's another one kind of. Okay, and then here's this last side here. Okay, all right, hold your breath. Hold your breath, you're getting ready to see the money shot, people. Getting ready to see the money shot. I'm gonna look at it first. Oh, it's so cute, you guys. Look at that, look at that. Isn't it just the cutest thing? Oh my goodness, I just love it. Okay. Easy, easy, easy now. We're gonna put this thing together. So I have already cut a flirty flamingo mat. Flirty flamingo is cut at four by five and a quarter. 
and I will put this right here. And then, now let me tell you something right here. If you've been around the Stampin' Up! world for more than one hot minute, you might recognize a couple of these blues here as Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock. Any, any of those names ring a bell? Those used to be some Stampin' Up! colors. And we have a color refresh happening. Demonstrators are going to find out on March 29th what colors stay, what colors go, what colors come back. What colors? I was trying to make it rhyme. It didn't. Um, but we find that out. I'm going to bet that those two colors might come back because they're included in this paper. You know what I mean? So color refresh works like this. You know you're going to lose the 2021-2023 in colors. Okay? So we know those are going. If there's any you love, you better get the ribbon. You better get the blend. You better get the refill, um, the paper, all that stuff now. And then... We know that some colors are coming back, so maybe you still have them in your stash. And we know that there might be some brand new colors, so just keep an eye out. March 29th. Okay, I'm going to do my sentiment real quick. I did not want to do anything that included a die because, like I said, the dies are on back order. So we're just using the stamps, and these stamps are gorgeous enough in their own right. I have, is this, what is this, petal pink? I think so. Yeah, petal pink. I'm going to stamp the flower in that. Remember how I've been stamping off lately? I'm going to do that again. I want it to be a faint flower here. Okay. Perfect. Look at that. Perfect. If you want perfection, you come to Julie Salva. And by that, I mean anyone but Julie Salva. And now I'm going to get my basic gray. And I have thank you. Because, I mean, we always use a thank you note. See, I'm going to mess up now. I know I am. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. And I'm going to step that right over the flower. The reason I did that flower faint behind the sentiment is when the sentiment was here without it, it just was kind of like stark. It was very, very white. And I thought, we, we need a little something other than that. So let's put this bad boy together. Hear this. I just use my um, circle dies and my, my scallop. There we go. Scallop circle die here again with the, the flirty flamingo. And I'm going to grab some dimensionals. Why am I stuck here on this one? So, dimensionals. Why is it? I mean, you guys, I have the dimensionals out. I'm working with the dimensionals and then they disappear. Oh, here they are. I found them. Made some dimensionals. Plop this right here. And this card is done. So you guys, you can just see how easy this is to do. And you can use your paper scraps up. I'm gonna put my sentiment there. Look at there. It's done. All done. I hope you like it. I really do. Ah, Jennifer Vandewecken says that those two colors are coming back and a blow, bo blo blo ho, boho blue is coming. So that's exciting. So, y'all, I am sorry. I didn't, I didn't click the, or click the button that would make this not backwards, but I'll post a picture of it. So there you go. And you can see these look pretty similar. I mean, not exactly, but pretty similar. So super easy technique called the sunburst technique. Okay. So I hope that you like that. I am going to move it aside now and just kind of scoot all those scraps out of the way. All right, I'm gonna teach you something new. Maybe that was new too. I don't know who this person is that's been doing fun folds because that's me. And um, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know what's, what's come, in, come over me. Okay, Mango Medley. We've got that. We've got some white. We've got some more mango. We've got some DSP. We've got some olive. All right there. Okay, first let's do the fold. I'm going to teach you this technique. It's a new thing. You may be familiar with it. You may not. It is called a slide and lock card. A slide and lock card. Now, I learned how to do this from a tutorial that a demonstrator named Wendy Cranford did. Um, she may have learned it somewhere else. I don't know, but I have to give her credit because that's where I learned it. All right. So this is the front of the slide and lock card. Why is it called a slide and lock card? Because look, this joker slides off and your card opens up. Look at that, look at that. Then I can close it back. 
and I need to, to turn this to where it's facing me. I maneuver right in here a little bit. In the south, we say that word is finagle. We are finagling, and I'm just sliding it right. Come on, baby. Talk to me. I just slide it right back down, okay? So a slide and lock card. I don't know if you guys have ever learned how to do a slide and lock card. Oh, good, Jennifer, you haven't, so you're excited to see it. Yay, I'm so excited to teach you something. Um, okay, let's do it. Let's talk dimensions. Again, I will post these in the description of this video so you'll have them, okay? Here's how it works. For the slide and lock card, you've got your card base that is five and a half by eight and a half, okay? Five and a half by eight and a half. You're gonna score it, very easy scores, very easy scores at one and a half. So let me grab this and if you don't mind, I might do it out of camera range a little bit here, okay? one and a half and five and three quarters. Okay, so scoring at one and a half, scoring at five and three quarters. As a reminder, you guys know I get my blades confused all the time, so I always mark my scoring blade with a Sharpie, just put a little X on there um, so that I can, can see it and, it and it removes any temptation to cut when I should score, all right? So again, this piece is five and a half by eight and a half. I have scored it one and a half inches and five and three quarters inches. The other pieces that you need for this are two, two by two pieces. Okay, I'm not gonna sing the Noah's Ark song about the animals going two by two on the Ark, but you do need two, two by two pieces. And I think they need to be, it probably doesn't matter, but I do think they should be in the same color as your card base, okay? So there's that. Then you will need two pieces of basic white thick, basic white thick. Also cut it two by two. Can you do this without thick? Probably, but I think that the thick is going to give you your best bet, all right, because you're, you're maneuvering a lot, okay? Then you're gonna have your DSP. Now the DSP that I chose to use for this is the, um, the rainy day, no, is it the rainy day? It's whatever the, the DSP is. Yeah, I think it's rainy day. Plain in the rain. The plain in the rain DSP. You need three pieces. One piece, one and a quarter by five and a quarter. One piece, two and a half by five and a quarter. And then a piece for the inside using the dreaded eighth of an inch measurements. I hate eighth of an inch. But four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And that's going to go on the inside a piece of white, three and three quarters by five, and then I took a stitched shape square, and you'll see why when I get to it. And I know that sounds like a lot, but truly, it, it this is very easy. Um, I taught myself how to do it this afternoon following Wendy's tutorial, which was great, by the way, um, and so I know that you can as well. So I'm gonna fold these pieces in, on the score or on the score lines and you want that crisp fold so I'm taking my bone folder and I'm rubbing over it pretty good right there all right at this point you can actually go on and adhere your DSP so that's what I'm going to do just to kind of clear some room up here and I do love this DSP I'm gonna tell you what I, I am just appalled at the things I have not played with I mean, I don't think, um, I, I told you when we did the art gallery card, the faux stair step card, I had done nothing with that stamp set, nothing. And I mean, that makes me sad because now what if it retires? But nonetheless, I can still play with it. All right, come on, baby. You guys talk to your seal and your supplies. I do. Oh, you just heard me, so. Okay. And I'm gonna put this one right here. Cut it. I'm kind of making them even. Um, I did not do this on purpose, but I do think it looks cute, okay? So that's that. Y'all, I do, I love that. Does this look kind of scream 1970s to you? If you're of a certain age, I mean, does this look scream 1970s? I mean, you're a rookie all the way, yeah? Yes, even you can do this, Jennifer Drake. I love looking at y'all's comments. To me, it does. I, I look at this and I think Brady Bunch. I, I don't know why, it's just me, but I do. So I've gotten, I've got that. I'm going to go on and put this piece on the inside again, just to clear out a little bit of space here. I did not want to use the rainy paper and the rainy accents, even though they're super cute because we've had a lot of dreary rain and all that. And I just, 
I kind of wanted it to be cheery. Okay, so there we go. So this is where we're at right now. All right, now this is just the card base. And, and again, super easy, but card base. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do the slide and the lock little device. You guys are gonna flip out about how easy it is. I promise you are. Okay, so we're gonna take these two white pieces. Again, they're two by two, all right? And we are going to score them at one inch. Now, could you just fold it in half? Sure you could, but I'm gonna tell you something. Thick white, when you fold it in half, if you don't score it, it is an, it is an ugly fold. It is an ugly fold. It's all crinkly and it just doesn't look good. And listen, I am all about doing something quick, but it's just, it's just not worth it. So you wanna score at one inch there. Brenda, 60s Volkswagens, yeah. Laura, well, I love the paper too, all right? So there we go. So I've, I've scored both of these. I don't know if you can see it at, at one inch, okay? So they were two by two scored at one inch. Now I'm gonna fold them, and again, back to that bone folder. I'm gonna break those fibers down. I will break you. <laughs> why, why did that sound like so like evil, didn't it? I will break you. Okay, so we've got those. Look at that, I've got adhesive right there because I moved my silicone thing. All right, do you remember when we did the seagull card on Wednesday and we matched our folded ends? That's what we're gonna do today. I mean, we are already veterans at this, so I do not anticipate any problems whatsoever with you guys because we've already learned this technique. Now we're going back to our green glue, and remember what I tell you, what I tell you, less is more with the green glue. Who, who do we know that always puts too much? Yes, it's me, but I'm learning, okay? So I've got my green glue right here, and I'm gonna take this and just lie it flush against this colored piece in our case, the melon, man, mango me melody, whatever it is, okay? Now remember, the green glue takes a minute before it sets, so if it slides, you've got a hot minute to move it around, all right? I'm using my bone folder here just to get it on there firmly. Then, we're gonna take the other side, do the same thing. We're gonna match up those folded edges, the creased edges. You can already see how this is coming. I bet you already, I know Jennifer Vanderwecken, I bet you you can already see how this device now is made, right? Laura, I do, I do. I, I um, the green glue is, it, it's, it's very, it's a rebel, it's a rebel. Jen, you love that, <laughs> you love that. Oh, I'm horrible with green glue but we're gonna do it today because we need it for a project. We need to make it work for us. We are in charge of the green glue. It is not in charge, oh, it is not in charge of us. Okay, all right, all right. And see, I've just, I've gotten it flush there, okay? You guys can see this already. I know you can, because you're so smart. Look at these things right here. See these right here? Do I have it in, in the frame here? I do not, it would be easier if I had it in the frame. There we go. Right there. Well, my word, I'm horrible here. Okay, there. Okay, that's where the slide is going to go. But before we do that, we're going to take that second piece of Mango Medley. And if that is not the name, just work with me. I, it, mango is in there somewhere. I know it is. And we're going back to green glue. Now, could you use your, your, your stamp and seal? You can. You can. But again, this is one of those little tools that um, the paper is, is, I mean, it's gonna earn its money doing this, so it's got to be a nice solid adhesive. And this piece is just gonna cover the whole shebang. Okay, there we go, right on that. And I'm gonna push it down, again, get it nice and firm. And we have made our little device, okay? You can see there, and you can see there. See that? So look what happens here now. All right, I'm gonna make it cute in a minute, but I wanna show you guys how it works. So you take it and you slide it right there, and then you take your other one and you slide it right there, okay? And then you just start finagling. Now look, here's the thing. You can see how your card is kind of starting to bow up a little bit. That is nothing at all to be concerned about, and I'm gonna show you why. All right, so we have this in here, and I've got my little joker. There we go, starting to move. There we go. Here's what you're gonna do, okay? Again, it's paper. Don't be scared of it, all right? You take your bone folder, and this is something Wendy did, and you start to, to using your bone folder, you get rid 
of that crease, okay? And, and you can see, there we go. You're kind of sliding that paper out. You'll, when you make this, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Your paper, it, it, it bows up a little bit once you get this in here. So you need to get it get it flat again. So that's why you're using that bone folder to do that. Do you have any questions on that? Mango Melody, thank you, Jennifer. Okay, so we've got, got that there. We've got our sliding apparatus here. It's working. Now, again, the first time you get it in there, it's going to take it a minute to, to get used to it and everything. But see how we'll just, we're going to start moving it around a little bit. So it starts to work a little bit for us. I'm not worried about this getting crinkled because it's not even going to show. All right. And I'm worried about that. Okay. Let's make it cute. So here's what we're going to do. Did I use dimensionals there? Um, I don't. No, I did not. All right. We're going to glue this. This is the stitched shapes square. You know, I was going to say, I think you could. I don't think it matters what shape you use right here. I really don't because you're going to be covering this up. So if I wanted to use an oval or a, something from Scallop Contours or whatever, I could. So I, I really don't think it matters, but we are, I'm going to go on and use the Stitched Shapes Square. I, I have to really enunciate when I say that. That is a lot of S's. Okay, so I'm just going to center this on here and go. Again, I did not need to use the green glue. Honestly, I don't even know why I did just then. I feel as if I'm getting a little cocky and the glue is going to make me pay for it. Okay, next thing we're going to do, I am going to pull out my little buddy here, Tommy the Turtle. I don't know that his name is Tommy. No one has given me an official word on that, but that's his name for me. Now, here's the thing with this paper and the stamp set. You can cut out the dies mask. We've talked about this before with um, the hues of happiness that we did on Wednesday. We have dies that match this. So like dies right here match Freddy the Fox. And right here they match. I know y'all thought I was going to say um, Roger the Rabbit, but I'm not. I'm going to say Rico. Rico. Y'all look at that shirt. He looks like a Rico to me. Rico the Rabbit. Um so we have dies that match, but but um, Teddy the turtle matches this paper. So I am going to cut him out real quick using my baby boss. See Jennifer Wacken, remember Vander Wacken? Remember when we first started and you had to even tell me what this machine was called? I I, I have improved, you guys, and I don't need you to tell me. Cause I will tell myself it doesn't have to be true. I will tell myself, Julie, you have improved, and then I'll I'll even respond and say thank you. All right. I'm doing this over to the side a little bit. You can kind of see, though, I believe. So I've got him lined up in the die. Remember, I told you if you have a hard time with your baby boss, you want to make an, an E shape with your plates. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in just a minute. There we go. Let me take a second and show you what I'm talking about with this E shape. Take your platform, number one, okay? Take the number two and line it up. Let me move this out of the way. Line it up a little bit underneath, okay? So you've got this, this spacing right here, all right? Then put your paper in your die and whatnot. Then take the third platform and line it up flush with your base plate. So if you look really close, you can kind of see this would look like an E. So you've got these two ends that match and then this one it's a little bit down, down a little lower, okay? Don't know why it works, but it does. Okay, we're back at him, y'all. He's so cute. Say hello to the ladies, Teddy. I feel as if I should call him Theodore. I think he's a Theodore. I don't think he's a Teddy. Now, I have also, using these, these dies, I gotta tell you, with dies, this is what you need to know about me. I am not all here for the intricate dies. I'm just not. Um, I prefer things that are quick and easy, but I'm gonna tell you something. These dies with the little pieces and the grass and the, um, I, mean, I mean, it's like paper dolls. I don't know if y'all played paper dolls when you were young. I did, and I loved them. So this is an exception. I will absolutely play with all these intricate dies. So I did a little tree trunk, because Theodore, he, he is not a teddy, is not. Theodore is going to be standing on the tree trunk to give this flower. He's a little short, and so he needs um, 
Yes, Jennifer, post-it tape to hold the dies in place. See there, Joe? Tommy, Rico, Freddie, and Teddy. That You will remember him forever. Okay, Theodore's standing on the tree trunk. He's a little short. He needs a little help to get up there to give that flower to... Who would his girlfriend be? Theodore? Theodora? I, I don't know. Anyway, to give that flower to whoever he's given it to. All right, so we've got that. I'm going to slide it off because I want to finish up my inside real quick. You guys, just think about the cuteness of this. I mean, it is just so cute. So I'm going to put my inside. I have an easy sentiment. This comes right from the Plain in the Rain stamp set. All right. You can see these, these guys. You've got your, your clouds and your rain, but you've got Theodore and Rico and Freddie all right here. Okay. Let's stamp a sentiment. We're going with Oh Happy Day. I know you're singing it in your mind right now, aren't you? Oh Happy Day. I know you're singing it. I'm going to put it right here in the corner. It's just a little easier to write a sentiment like that. Look at that. Y'all look at that. What are you thinking right now? You're thinking, she lined that up just perfectly. Let's pause and think about that for a minute. Okay, we've thought about it. All right, so we've got that. That's going on the inside. A little bit of adhesive. Put it right in here. And we are almost done. One last bit of finagling. Are you are you amazed at how easy this is? I mean, sometimes you look at things and you're like, that's gonna be really hard. And it's not. One last bit of finagling. Come on, Theodore. Slide you down. There we go. Right there. I am going to put and Jennifer Vanderwecken. I'm thinking of you because I know you said these are your favorites. I'm gonna put some brass butterflies on out here. Let me tell you something, guys, about these brass butterflies. Stampin' Up has a lot of brass butterflies in stock. Why don't you just go on and buy some brass butterflies so you can help them out? I think that'd be a good plan. Okay. And ta-da! There he is. Okay, I'm gonna bring the camera up and talk to you. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, so let's, I, I, y'all, I, I know I'm giddy right now. I am so excited at how cute these projects are. So just to show you, we use the Irresistible Blooms. We use scraps from the coordinating paper with that. We made what is called a sunburst card, which sunburst, of course, spring break. Of course, you're going to have a sunburst on spring break. So we've got that. We did our slide and lock card. We have met our friend Theodore the Turtle. And if you remember, we're just going to slide him. I'm going to slide him back up. I mean, you guys, you can do this with anything, anything. So we made a slide and lock card. So I hope you liked it. I really do. I had so much fun. And seeing your names come across, some of you guys, thank you, Jennifer. One second of silence for Julie. It's true. It's true, Brenda. Your names, I mean, oh, it's like friends, you know, and the more you come back, the more I feel like I know you. So thank you for that. Um, if you liked this video, um, share it if you want to. You can even say, y'all, this girl is nuts, but she makes me laugh. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, and then once again, should you choose to place an order, you will receive the supplies for all six of these cards. I'm going to show them again to you real quick. Theodore, Sunburst, Faux Stair Step, Seagull, can we fly one more time? Seagull, Seagull, um, Hues of Happiness with the fun vellum fold here, and finally, Waves of Inspiration. You'll receive all the card stock to make those six cards. If you spend 50, you will get a pack of gems as well. If you spend nothing, come back anyway. I don't even care. I don't even care. Just come back anyway. Um, I am going to spend the remainder of my day getting my card club supplies packed up. This is my second month of card club. So these are the cards that they're making with Irresistible Blooms. They'll make two of each. That one. That one. That one. And that one. You may be asking yourself, Julie, how does card club work? I want to be in the club. Well, funny you ask. I will have a link for you to sign up. Card club is in the mail. I cut all the supplies and send them to you. You'll get about 20 to $25 worth of swag. You can sign up for a monthly subscription to it. Um, you do not need me to make your cards. 
But if you are local to the Nashville area, you can come to a class because I have an in-person card club as well. We make the same projects, but it's still super fun. So, you guys, thank you so much. I have had the best time with you guys over the last three days. I will be back with another series soon. Um, I don't know what it's going to be yet, but it's going to be amazing. So, hey, thank you so much. And um, if you have questions, post them. I'll go back and look at the comments. Jennifer can't wait to stamp with me in person. Yay. Soon. End of April. End of April. Um, but if you have questions, let me know. And I'm happy to uh, find you someone to answer them. It won't be me. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.